down. Good morning, everybody. We're going to talk today about the, the impending disaster with Social Security and Medicare. Now, yesterday I was just going to high school. I woke up last year and I was 62 and qualified for the, the early retirement. 42. Some of you, 42 on YouTube, <laughs> don't you ever forget it. Some of you are the same in the same boat, but some of you are also like my lovely bride. She's only 44. She's got, you know, another decade and a half, almost two decades to retire, even, even to get to 62. Mm. There might not be anything left by the time you get there. And what is left, they might take some back from you, which is just absolutely crazy. So let me let me run down this little presentation I put together for you guys. This is not meant to be a fear factor thing. You're watching right now. This is what we're going to talk about. Let me let me take this banner off. Social Security is it going to be destroyed by the time you are getting close to retirement age? Is that what's going to happen? You know, we're giving billions to illegal aliens, as you guys know, billions. And also sending it offshore. I don't know if you guys have done any research into what happened in 2014 in Ukraine, but one of our alphabet agencies took the country over. So isn't it amazing that we just willy-nilly send them billions and billions and billions of untrackable money? Absolutely untrackable money. Okay? So we're doing that in addition to all the other problems we have right now in the world. We're doing that. But pay attention. Because currently, workers will still receive Social Security benefits after the trust fund reserve reserves become depleted in 2034, 10 more years. But it's possible that future retirees will only receive 78% of their full benefits unless Congress act, acts. When I say acts, it sounds like I'm saying ask you know what i mean but <laughs> let me let me get back to this let me let me scroll through this while we're talking 78 percent. so you've been putting in like i began working when i was 15. i began paying into payroll taxes when i was 15. i began paying into medicare taxes when i was 15. and now i'm 60 63 62 coming up on 63. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i forget heart problems <laughs> What's crazy to me is all these illegals stepped into our country in the last three years. They were they were coming in before, but we've had seven million plus illegals come into this country. They're getting free housing, free food, free phones, free health care. To the tune, there was actually a TV reporter, which was odd that the mainstream media covered it. The state run media covered it. They said, I want to say, and uh, I'd be lying to give you the city. They said when they totaled everything up that every family of four gets every month, it's between fifteen dollars and $20,000. They've never worked a day in America legally. They're not citizens. And I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that and hear that. But you who've been working like I have since I was 15. My mama told me, mommy told me, you want a car, go get a job. You want to pay for insurance to have that car, go get a job. Yeah, and I know she she can pipe in too. Yeah, yeah. Same I thing. Was, I was working since I was 11 on all kinds of stuff and then 13 full time, 40 hour work week inside high school. <laughs> Nobody invited me into their country to give me a paycheck for even four thousand dollars for just showing up because mm. you're happy to see me now we're calling those same people newcomers we're not calling them illegal aliens because they want you to frame it the way they want you to frame it here's what's crazy you guys know you see on the news the caliber of some of these younger people coming up with all the issues some of them have mm. about how the world should be and then they're going to get to retirement and be told, well, we know you put in a dollar, you know, every, you put in this, this many dollars every time we, you got a paycheck. 
but we're only going to give you back. We were supposed to give you back a certain percent of that. Now we're just going to give you back 78% of what you were due. So now you may have to go, you know, be a greeter. I don't know if they'll still have greeters at Walmart by then, but I just, I just know that so many people are going to be affected by this. Let me keep going down this stream. Medicare and Social Security, this is where it gets crazy because you're talking about billions we're currently giving to these illegal aliens to come into America. We're currently underfunding by $175 trillion. You need to do the math on that, how much a trillion is. You, you could do the math on just how much a billion is. $175 trillion, almost double the economic output of every country on Earth. The deficit exceeds the entire, this is the very last, down here, the very, the very last bullet point. The deficit of the Medicare and Social Security plans, that deficit exceeds the entire, this is, listen to me, I'm going to say it slowly. Actually, you know what? I'm going to let Hurricane read it off slowly. You want to read that off? Yeah, the deficit of $170 trillion exceeds the entire economic output of all countries on Earth. Suggesting medical Medicare and Social Security may struggle within a decade. No way. <laughs> of all, all countries, countries on Earth exceeds that, and that's their that's their ten year estimation. There's going to be that 175 trillion is what they're estimating. I want to say it's going to be more than that, but they're they're giving you a figure because they like to do that. This is how much it's going to be. It's crazy. Probably going to be twice that because it's the government talking. The same government who told you I want to say it was 1937. It might have been 1927, I think it was 1937, they began taking money out of checks for Social Security, saying, well, we're going to take this now, we're going to set it aside for you and invest it, so when you get to retirement age, we can protect you. Now look what's happening. It's crazy. The very last paragraph there, you want to read that? Yeah, projections should just suggests that Medicare and Social Security may struggle to meet full benefit obligations within the next decade, with factors like inflation and economic output adding a strain due to insufficient funds coming in to support these programs. Now, you're supposed to have the best of the best. We, pardon the pronoun, we are supposed to have the best of the best guiding America because you voted them in office, right? You put the people in office that you, you voted for. They're in office. They're supposed to be the best of the best of the best, sending billions overseas. You can't even trace it. Mm -mm. That there's a reason for that, because that alphabet agency that runs Ukraine, they don't want you to trace it. There's a reason these illegals are coming in. You just haven't been notified of what that reason is unless you're looking at it for what it really truly is. It's exactly what it looks like. If you take the full economic output of every country, it's about $100 trillion. The unfunded liability the U.S. taxpayer faces over the next 75 years is $175 trillion. That's of Andrew A. We'll just say Andrew A. to make it simple, of openthebooks.com. Read that last paragraph right there. You, in, can just say, and you can just say Mr. A. Yeah, Mr. A says, uh, in showcasing the magnitude of the situation, Mr. A compares the unfund, unfunded liability to the entire Oh, sorry, to the entirety of the federal spending since the inception of the United States in 1787. I'm going to reread that again. She did a great job and she sounds better when she speaks than I do. But in showcasing the magnitude of the situation about Social Security and Medicare going broke or going near destitute or cutting benefits to people that have been paying in for decades and then being told, well, you can't we can't pay you back what we told you we would. That unfunded liability is the entirety of the federal spending since the United States of America, as we know, was put into play since 1787. That's frightening. That's where the numbers get so crazy. And that's where, even in the military, some of you military folks know this, so I'm not telling you something you don't know. Even in the military, every October when the fiscal year came close, if there was any money left in the coffers, for every squadron, they would spend it. Even though they had held it back, held it back, held it back to make sure that they had enough for the year, once it got to October, everybody knew if you don't spend that money, you're gonna, you're gonna get that much taken out next year. Mm -hmm. 
So you'll get that much less next year. So they would go on spending sprees. They would buy a whole different set of clothes for you as a, as a you know squadron member. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was totally 180 out from any kind of business in the world. If there's a surplus, you put it aside. You reinvest that. The military was like, no, 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 spend it. Now that we know we have an overage, spend it. Get it spent before the, before the end of the year, or else they're going to hold us back that much more money next year. It's crazy how the government operates this way. Now, the age distribution of the population. You see the graph down there, the dark blue is 65 plus. Right now, since 2020, there's been about 16.3% of me. People, I'm not, I'm not 65, I'm in, the, I'm in the yellow, 20 to 64, 57% of me, 16% of 65 plus that are full retirement age. And then you look at what's happening in 2040, there's gonna be 20.4% 65 plus, there's going to be 53% of the 20 to 64, and there's going to be uh, 25% of the 0 to 19, okay? And then you take that and look at the current outlay versus the revenues. All the people working that are having the government paid back out of their check every single month, mm -hmm. which again, we're going on March 11th, everything changes for independent contractors. That's part of this. They want to get every dollar from you, but you can't track what we sent to Ukraine, but they're going to get every dollar they can get from you. You see right now in 2023, because that's about where that line is, 2023, you see that the outlays with the scheduled benefits, the projected, is already above what's coming in with the payable benefits. And there's going to be a gap that widens and widens and widens. What needs to be paid versus what's in the coffers to pay? Let me ask you this, though. If we weren't giving it to a, 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 all these illegals, do you know why the illegals? Do you know why they're just giving them free everything and letting them just fly into these cities and, and get everything that you can't get, even though you've been working since, like in my case, I've been working since I was 14. I was delivering newspapers when I was 12 or 13. You know, it was my first job running newspapers around the town and going every uh, whatever day I did to collect the money for the people. I've been working my whole life and I'm just now getting government benefits for this Social Security. At 62, these people are walking in, getting all that right away, never worked a legitimate day in America. And it's exactly what it looks like. What's it going to do to all these all these programs? Crazy. You want to read that top one? Pretty yeah, good. even if the Disability Insurance Trust Fund and the Old Age Survivors Insurance Trust Fund were to be combined, the fund would still run out in 2033. That's 10 years. Nine years. 10 years, you know. Oh, nine years, yes, yes. Close enough, yeah. close enough. But not less than a decade. <laughs> close enough. What's crazy to me, if you look at the very last paragraph in this block, Social Security funds could also be maintained if there was an overall reduction in the benefits for retirees. In other words, if we cut who's already getting money, we can take what we cut with them and give it to the people behind them. Well, it's, it's not my fault you guys did your job poorly. It's not my fault you guys overspent with countries that they don't participate in anything in America. They just take, take, take. It's not my fault that you brought these people in and just said, hey, here's a checkbook. Here's a checkbook. I saw that yesterday that the, uh, the Mayor, is it the mayor of New York? No, that's Hochul. Governor? I, I saw yesterday that they said they're going to start deporting the allegedly the illegals because it's going to be too much of a burden on the citizens. I'll tell you what's happening because I'll tell you what's happening. It's exactly what it looks like. Mm -hmm. They're bringing them in. They're going to do it regardless of what you think. And they're going to spend the money on them. And they're, they're already, if you, if you look at what you can find online, there's people already in, in uh, Georgia that are saying when they're landing in Atlanta and getting, you know, getting all their stuff there, they're going to get in, uh, their driver's license. They're going to get in the car. They're getting their insurance. Sure they are. They're getting seven, eight, ten thousand, twelve thousand $10,000, a month for a family of four. And then they're being registered to vote. They were supposed to pass 
in New York, they had an amendment to let 800,000 of them already vote. And allegedly that's been shot down, but that's, that's the whole purpose. Mm -hmm. If they get those votes, doesn't matter what anything else happens. You don't need mail-in voting anymore. Just have them go and do it, you know, in person. It's just, it's gotten crazy. America's gotten crazy. We're giving billions to people that are not even born here, have no citizenship here. They walk in the country, get all of these things, and they're calling them asylum seekers, and now they're calling them newcomers, which is just wow. bizarre to me. And we're sending billions offshore. Like that that bill to send the last bit of money, the last billions to Ukraine was turned down. But it, it just, it got pushed through anyway, because it's the alphabet agencies. They do what they want. They don't have to wait for somebody to vote. They just send it and there's no tracking it. There's no tracking it. You don't, you don't, you don't have any reconciliation, but they're going to want to know if you spent $600 on cash app or on Venmo. Yeah, it's crazy. But they can't track that those billions that are being sent all over the world. I'm telling you guys, this is going to get critical mass. I Listen, I'm glad I'm 62. I'm glad I'm getting to the last end of my life. I'm not glad I have a heart condition, but I'm glad I'm at the, at the point in my life where I, I go, you know what? I don't need to, I don't need to worry about 40, 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. You know, I just don't. And the, the, the congestive heart failure is making that pretty true, but this is going to get crazy. And I, I pity you folks that are younger that are coming up. I'm going to tell you this, you need to turn everything in. You can turn in, get all your debt gone and start stacking get get a paid off property if you got to come up here and live in one of these northern snow states that don't have a lot of people just to be able to afford a house i don't but you know what i even that i would tell you to do that but i don't know i sure as hell wouldn't go in the military no. i sure as hell wouldn't go in the military i would not tell any any person i know to go in the military because everything has gotten so crazy woke you don't know which way is up I just know that you better make sure that you are protected financially, your your family, your immediate family is protected financially, that your debt is low and you have the income coming in where you're not just struggling every single week. Because there is nothing worse in the world than to struggle every single week mm -hmm. when you watch these illegal immigrants being showered with money that's, that you're being taxed to give them. There's nothing worse than that psychologically. And I just want to say that immigrants who are legal, immigrants that who are legal, don't get, they don't receive a penny from anything. They actually have to pay out a lot of money to become legal. So it, it's not just all immigrants. No, there's illegal immigrants. And then there's immigrants that have done it all proper with all the paperwork. And we actually have to pay quite a substantial amount of money to become legal and we receive nothing from the government until we've paid in to this system for at least 10 years or, or the equivalent of that block of time. So anyway. <laughs> I don't know how it got to be almost 20 minutes. Thank you guys for watching now or later. There's, I've got so many more videos to put up just about the state of America mm. as we thought it was versus how it really is. Because that's the biggest problem is people still think that there's a there's a silver lining all, in all this. There's not a silver lining. It's going to get uglier before it gets better. It's got to. Mm -hmm. It's got to. Because they're pitting us all against each other and they're doing whatever they want to do. Whatever they want to do. And then they're telling you you're crazy if you ever speak out about it. About anything. Social Security may be insolvent. It's going to be at least they're getting their 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 pay cut. Coming up to retirement, being told, well, you're not going to get what we told you you're getting. And that's not if they jack the age up as well. <laughs> it's crazy. I never thought I would see this in my lifetime. You guys be good. God bless. As you see, she's sitting here in a robe. It's time for me to uh, Saturday morning. <laughs> time for me to go do some snuggle bunking. You guys yes, be sir. good. God bless. <laughs>